for this installment of the Musicians Interview Series. I'll be interviewing Kate Holzmer, who plays viola in the BPO. Hello, Kate. Hello. What's that noise? Oh, bird noises. It's a bird. We're Whistle. preparing for our Mother's Day concert. Kate, uh, how did you get started playing the viola? Um, I started playing the viola. It's actually a funny story. I played violin when I was a real little kid, and then my uh, violin teacher offered half price lessons to anyone who would switch to the viola. Uh, and what, what's the difference between the violin and the viola? Um, the viola is slightly larger than a violin. I wish we had a violin. If you saw, it, um, if you saw them together, you would see the difference. Um, but you hold it the same way. It's a slightly larger and slightly lower. It's okay. A fifth lower. It's a it's a fifth lower. Okay. So all the finger, the way you play it, is it? How is the way you play it different from how you would play the violin? Um, not very, except for that. Um, you know, you just. <laughs> You have to reach a little bit farther, but other, other than that, it's totally the same. So the fingering is the same? Yes, the fingering is exactly okay, the same. Okay, so there's no, there's no different techniques that you use to play the viola than you would the violin? Um, there's very sort of subtle different, like there's a slight difference in how we vibrato, um, but both for the most part, no. Okay, and how, what inspired you to first pick up, well you said you started on the violin, what inspired you to, to start, what, what inspired you to pick up an instrument to begin with? Um, when I was in second grade, my um, friend Nissa played the violin for show and tell at school. And that was it, you were that home. That was it, I so, went home and told my mom I wanted to play the violin. So you started in second grade, mm -hmm. that's, pretty, er, that's pretty early for an instrument. Yeah, yep. And how has the viola evolved over the last couple of hundred years? I mean, I know string instruments haven't changed too much, but what are some of the technological advancements of this instrument? Well, um, I would say violas have gotten a little bit bigger um, and louder. It used to be that violas, uh, they're, they're sort of an imperfect design um, in terms of resonance and things. And over the years, uh, makers have gotten better at making louder instruments that project a little bit. Oh, okay. And what's the role of the viola in the orchestra? Um, the viola is sort of a supporting character. Like, we often play the harmonies, um, we play the offbeats. We're, uh, we're the supporting voice, we're the inner voice. So you rarely get a chance to really shine and be a star. It's true. We're kind of um, best supporting actors. Sometimes we get a <laughs> melody, but not, not as often as like violin. And how do you... How do you... Oh. Sorry. Excuse <laughs> us. Excuse us. <laughs> How do you, um, could you, could you play us something? Maybe sure. a famous passage for the viola or a solo or, or something, I don't know, whatever your favorite is. Okay, some noodling. So going back to your comment about being a supporting character, you're almost a bridge between the violins and the cellos. Exactly. And both of those instruments have a lot of really neat parts. Do, do you feel like you've been robbed of some really good parts, or for the most part, do violists like being the unsung hero in the middle? I think it's a little bit of both. Like sometimes I wish I had more melodies, but it really is satisfying to be, like you said, an unsung hero. It's sort of, um, it's a little bit special and it's a little bit different and you have to um, sort of make the most of it and take a lot of pride in um, sort of helping, if that makes any sense. That, that's a great answer. Now, I've, I've, being a brass player, this is something I don't have to worry about, but how does temperature and humidity, all, all these things can really wreak havoc on a string instrument, right? It's true. Um, humidity in particular makes our strings go in and out of tune. Um, that can be a drag, and most we have to. That's probably the hardest thing to control. We have humidifiers and dehumidifiers, and you know, just trying to keep the moisture right. Okay, so you can never leave your instrument in the car in the winter time or in the summertime. It's Although it's very bad for the wood to be you too hot or too cold. You probably shouldn't do that anyway. I do it all the time. <laughs> Uh, and my, my last question is actually, you write a blog about the Sabres, I do. right? Yes. So what are some of your, what, what are some parallels that you've noticed maybe between hockey or sports in general and, and playing in an orchestra? That is a really good question. I love the idea of um, sort of being on a team and working together and everyone has their different role to, to make something bigger happen. And I also think there's a lot of similarities and you know, hockey players, work so hard their whole life to do that and that's really the same for us we've worked you know that hard to get here and be in the orchestra and so I can kind of relate to that um, you know with a 
not we're not quite as uh, famous. There, or... There's not as many <laughs> fights that break out on stage as a hockey rink. Yeah. Although we although maybe fight. sometime you you might want to go over and body so check I'm someone. I'm distracted because um, Chip is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an awesome way to close it out. So thank you so much, Kate, for your time. Thanks for having me. Bye bye.